Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. That was, that was terrible. That was terrible. We'll do that. We'll, we'll, wait, wait, wait. We'll do that. How are we doing? Good morning, Inspire. Good morning. Way better. Hey, good morning, everybody. Wow, I am so glad you're here with us in the dome. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Man, what an exciting day. We are so excited. I mean, like the first song, I was so excited. I'm like, my man, fingers aren't even working. It's so excited. Settle down. I am really, really glad you're here today. Today is extra special because I've been married to her for 24 years today. Yes. Go ahead. I actually, um, oh, that's us. Oh. Uh, he didn't know that I was going to do that. So um, I beat her. I that win. Was 24 winner, years winner. ago. So 24 that years was ago. At the Puget Sound in Seattle, right there at the Brackets Landing, if anybody knows that area. So, anyways, you can take it down. That's, that's, I just had to share that. So, Amen. Uh, lots more time. Yeah, to go well, praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us here. Amen. Thank you. Happy anniversary. Happy huh? anniversary, babe. Uh, so, um, hey man, we were married 24 years ago today. That was, it was the first thing on my list. I was like, oh yeah. I've trained You've got to well. write it down if you don't want to forget. So, Anyways, hey. what a great way to spend an anniversary because we just created a brand new anniversary being in the domes together. Amen. Merging Praise with Stone Ridge, creating a new family together. So That's it's right. truly an honor. Hallelujah. We're so excited. So, hey, welcome home. Uh, we're going to do some announcements real quick. You should have got a bulletin. If you didn't, I'm sure the ushers will get you a bulletin. And if they weren't thinking about that, I guarantee they're scrambling right now. Yeah, they might I mean, have had to print more, so actually. If, yeah, we might have, I wonder if we ran, ran out. out. I don't know. That's a good thing. Yeah, so uh, if you didn't get a bulletin, raise your hand or steal one. Or just share. Or share, yeah, we like sorry. like to snuggle at... Inspire Sorry. Or snuggle. Share is better than steal, my bad. Uh, but um, I just want to uh, let you know what's going on real quick. So, <sighs> for the next few weeks, I'm going to introduce us and, and talk a little bit about Inspire because we have merged with Stonebridge Christian Fellowship. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes! That's a good reason to clap. Pastor Richard Tatham and Grace. I won't. Do you want to stand? Will you stand, please? I'll only do this one time, I promise. You got to cut over Go to ahead, him. Stand up, Michael, stand you up. Cut. Take that down, cut over. Please show them. Yeah! Amen. Uh, we honor them. We love them. Amen. Thank you, everybody. So, Pastor, T I don't want to scare you. But he built this thing with his own hands. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Amen. So We were just talking about that this morning and how I'm like, he built this. He built this. She goes, did he build that or did he have builders build that? I he, go, no, him and a bunch of teenagers. Him and, and kids <laughs> built it. Yeah, impressive. 50 years ago. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 52 years, huh? I think, actually. If you want to know so how 52? to build something that lasts, talk yes. to those two. Come on. It's easy to start. It's hard to finish. Yeah, huh? that's good. We, sometimes we give up too soon. And, and man, those two have, have definitely stayed through the hard, through the thick, through the thin. Amen. So praise the Lord. And, and then we also want to acknowledge Pastor Farron and Pastor Debbie. Stand real quick. I, will, I only make you do it once. Amen. Woo! Those guys are super glue. Super glue. Amen. Wonderful people. Thank you guys very much. So, uh, but yeah, now we're one big happy family. I'm going to real quick introduce you to a couple of associate pastors from Inspire. Tony, where are you? Right there. Tony. There's Tony, Heather, Tony and Merle, and, Heather. and Wade. They're there. Give them a hand. Where's Heather? I don't see her. Oh, there's Heather. Wave your hand. And then Mer Pastor Merle back over here. So we are all excited to be here and be a big happy family in the domes. Um, 
we, this is pretty great for us. Yeah. This is a, a, a long time dream come true. Amen. And we want to dream with you. This is, this is not a we or a them. This is an us. Us. Yeah. And whenever you think about inspire, you think us. This is something we are doing together, us. We, we're going to impact our community. We're going to impact our families. We're going to impact the people around us. It, the impact will be so great, it'll be felt far beyond Lake Havasu, far beyond Mojave County. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, man. The Bible says there is a promise to bring streams into the desert streams of living water into the desert. Why not be the spout? Amen. Amen. Okay, Amen. let's get to the announcements, okay? Okay, sorry. All right. He'll preach everything. Ye be warned. I, I've told you guys several times he preaches recipes, so I just can't get away from it. Okay, so um, if this is your first time here, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Um, please, uh, we do things a little different. If you want to text the word hello to 928-415-2727, um, fill out that little link that gets bounced back to you and we're going to get you plugged in and, and, um, and welcome to inspire now your family. And there's, yeah, man, and there's also, <laughs> now as, we got you. If there's cards right in front of the seat in front of you. If you're on the front row, sorry. You'll just have to do it later. That's the analog version <laughs> if you'd like to fill out a card. But there is an analog version in the seat back in front of you. There's a card you can fill out with that. There's also a prayer request and an offering envelope. We're gonna, just drop it in the bucket. Yep, when just it drop comes it in the bucket the when the bucket. offering comes around. And uh, if you want to make out an offering, if you want to get started now, you can make checks payable to Inspire. Uh, you can uh, just give cash, put your name on the envelope. Or you can give online, and they're going to give you those uh, ways, to, ways give to give here in a online. minute. But real quick, let me let me go through these keywords. So we have a little system to make it easy. I know you're going to be using your phones, so I'm going to put them to good use today. Yeah. Amen. So so yeah, go, go on to go back to, to the keywords one, real quick for me. So you can text the word hello to 928-415-2727 because Mr. 412 gets mad. He gets hellos every Sunday. So do me a favor. He does. Give me a, do me a favor. Make sure it's 928-415-2727. Just text the word hello. We'll send you back a link. You tap it. Put in your email. Uh, if you want to give online, just text the word give, prayer, update, app. All those things will, will send you back some information. It's easy to use. Like the prayer is awesome because you just text the word prayer. We'll send you a link. You fill out the prayer request. And people are literally praying within minutes of you submitting that form. And why not put the phone to good use? Amen. Yes. Get people praying for you right away. So praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Real quick. Uh, so prayer, um, we have prayer at six o'clock here, uh, on Wednesday night. So show up, we do a, a little bit of teaching and then we just gather together and, and we pray individually and then we come together and pray together. So pray for families and our community and our church and our leaders and, Amen. and our, um, it's very important to pray for those that are in leadership over our government as well. Lots of prayers need to go on right now. So, um, if you would like to get involved, um, just look at your bulletin. You can text the word "serve" to nine two eight four one five two seven two seven, and um, we have uh, Inspire one hundred and one. Uh, we'll be having that. And if you've never got plugged into Inspire and you'd like to, um, we're going to invite you to to uh, be a part of that class. More details to come on that. Um, and then uh, we have a men's camp out coming up. I'll let you talk about that. Woo, woo. Come on, man. Uh, so every year, Inspire goes up to the Wallapies. This year, we're going to probably go up in November um, because we need lots and lots of rooms. And, so, and it'll be super cold. And that way we can feel good about lighting these ginormous bonfires. So that's kind of what we do. We, we, we burn wood and we eat food and talk about Jesus. I don't know. I can't think of a better men's retreat. And lots of coffee. Yeah, yeah. Barrels of coffee. You guys did like axe throwing one year or something too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. That? We, talk, I don't, we, or do we, we not experiment talk about that? every year. Yeah. Bows and arrows. One time, I don't know. I think some kids got in trouble one year for chopping down trees out there. And it was, it was, it's, it's, no, it's they, fun. No, we didn't. We didn't do that. They didn't do that. Seriously. So it was. Amen. 
Anyways, if you'd like to get involved in men's ministry, they they actually meet monthly as well. The first Saturday of every month, um, and you can text the word "dude," and um, you'll get plugged into the system. And there's more information about that. We'll send you too. a reminder. Just text the word "dude." Same same number nine two eight four one five two seven two seven. And then we'll send you reminders when there's a men's breakfast or a, a retreat coming up. That way you always get a reminder. If you look inside your bulletin, uh, right on in this, it says text to sign up. Those are just some easy keywords to remember uh, to make sure you get information. So just text those words and, and that's it. And then our offering. Take it Amen. Away. Okay. Praise the Lord. Give Jenny a hand. My lovely bride at 24 years. Amen. So if this is your first time with us, uh, we've got a couple different things. So um, there'll be some pastors at the doors, everybody. Uh, th- there's one thing Inspire's known for. Like, like if you want to tell somebody how to get to Inspire, you're going to say, it's the golf ball church. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? So today, before you leave, we have golf balls for everybody, and they say Inspire on it. Amen. And then if, if, you want, if you want to invite somebody to church, just say, here you go. Inspire. And they'll be like, what? Yeah, yeah. It's the one that looks like a golf ball. They'll remember. Amen. And if this is your first time here uh, with us, um, if you're from Stonebridge, this is your first time with us or something, I've got a special gift I want to give you. Jenny and I will be in the lobby. Uh, Uh, The other pastors will be at the doors giving out the golf balls. But we just want to shake your hand, say thank you for being here, and give you that gift. Make sure you text the word hello if you can or uh, fill out one of those cards. I'm going to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. So I'm going to open my Bible to Matthew. Matthew. And if you want to start to prepare your gift, uh, you can download our church app. We have an Inspire app. It is the most holy thing for your phone. In fact, it'll sanctify. It's like baptizing your phone. If your phone needs a baptism, put the Inspire app on there. How do you get the app? Text the word app. (laughs) 928-415-2727. Go to the the Play Store, the iTunes Store, wherever you get. Download your games and things. And just do Inspire the Church and you can get the app. Okay? Uh, Online to inspirethechurch.com. You can give there. You can text the word give. We'll send you a link. You can give in person. Uh, If you want a a receipt for your giving, make sure you fill out an envelope if you give cash. And you can make your checks payable simply to inspire. All right. So I'm going to read a scripture in Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. And this is, uh, this has a lot with what we're going to be talking about today. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, and verse 25, I'm going to read, you're going to write, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, and this is Jesus, and he's saying this, he says, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Another version, he just simply says, don't worry about your life. Don't, think about that just for a moment. If you did not worry, another way uh, it says is, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Think about that. What if, tomo- what if you did not worry about tomorrow? What would you do differently today? Really, what would you do? If, if, if you did not have to worry about tomorrow, what would you do differently today? Would you step into a mission trip you've been thinking about? Would you volunteer for something? Would you start a new business, paint that picture, write that song you've been dreaming about if you didn't worry about tomorrow? You know what they say? They say the graveyard is the richest place on earth. Because it holds all the dreams, all the ideas, all the endeavors that were never done. The businesses never started. The ministries never stepped into. But what if you didn't worry about tomorrow? You simply said, I'm not worried about tomorrow. 
Because I, I really do believe that Jesus will take care of me. I'm not worried. Amen? Amen. Don't worry about your life. Amen? You guys ready? You want to go one more round? I got another sermon in my back pocket. All right, let's pray. Let's pray over our offering today. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for all you've done in our lives, for all you've given into our lives. You've cared for us. You've been a shepherd, guided us. You stayed with us when it was hard, navigated us when it was confusing, guided us when we weren't sure. Father, I ask you to continue your grace and mercy and blessing in our lives. Lord, I ask that you would give us wisdom here as stewards over the offerings that not one penny would go to waste, but all would go towards the glory and the gospel of Jesus. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm going to scoot my chair back a little bit because I only sit for a second. So I want to talk for the next few weeks A little bit about transition. Transition. And let me tell you what transition is. You see, transition is the process that happens when change occurs. Whether that change is external or internal, whether that change is wanted or warranted, change will happen. Think about it. One month ago, our current election looked radically different. That was one month ago. One month. And you can change things just like that. But that doesn't mean you've accepted it or gone with it. You see, transition is the process of change that happens with you, adapting to the change. We all undergo change. Sometimes there's a loss and it forces a change. Sometimes there's a a new beginning and it creates a change. Sometimes business goes down and it tells you you need to change. Sometimes business goes up, and well, you need the change. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You didn't know I was getting married today, did you? It is our anniversary, isn't it? (laughs) amen sometimes your sermon gets changed in the middle (laughs) but we all go through processes of change whether we like it or not maybe something outside changed maybe your church changed your pastor changed Now, how do you navigate that change? You see, here's why change is hard and why a lot of people don't do it well. Because change starts, transition starts with an end. Something stops. You know, when throughout the scriptures, the Bible talks about things ending and then new things beginning. The beginning, the new doesn't come till the old ends. And that's the hard part. 
Sometimes we're not ready for it to end. Sometimes it ends without us even knowing, and we have to now deal with that ending. Sometimes we want it to end. But navigating the process of change will help us, will, will guide us into whether we are fruitful in that new season, that change. So here's my, my message for today. It's quick, it's simple. Adapting to change is not easy. It isn't. I can't stand up here and tell you, come on now, just change. Have you ever had someone tell you that? You just got to go with the change. Like there's something wrong with you. And for a lot of people, the change means something very special to you has to end. And that's not easy. Jesus calls us to change. He calls us to end the old way of life in order to follow after him, to be born again, to change. To tra- and, and if you've accepted Jesus and experienced that born again, because you got, you got excited and someone promised you a mansion in heaven, and so you said, yes, I want to pray. <laughs> Whatever the reason was. And then you woke up the next day and you suddenly didn't feel as good as you felt on Sunday about that change. And you kind of wanted to go back and do the things that you said you weren't going to do anymore. See, even the Bible talks, the, the New Testament talks about this process inside. That process in which we changed, we transitioned. We leave behind old habits, old ways of doing things in order to walk towards the new thing that God has for us. I think one of the best things to think about is that because dealing with the ending is so difficult, and it is, is that reminding yourself of the promise and the new beginning is what will be a catalyst for you to move forward and keep carrying on. Adapting to change isn't easy, but it can yield powerful results in your life. We're all going to incur change. It was funny. I, I was thinking about it this morning. Like, things in today, and, and, I, and I'll just... Take the easy bait politics. Uh, how, how the change, especially if it's a big change, you know, and it produces anxiety, then it, it, it brings you back to you got to keep feeding yourself on the new news, right? To help the change. I remember one time uh, uh, when the coronavirus was coming out, and I, I realized the TV was constantly red. Like, God, and I was like, wait a minute. They changed all the colors to red, like constantly alerting you and then producing anxiety. And going, oh, yeah, and, and, and we all got crazy. And then anything they told us after that point, a lot of us were like, oh, okay, okay. Well, I don't know, okay, if that's what you say. And after a little bit, we're like, wait a minute. This started in the net up all the way. Are you sure that little piece of cloth is going to do something? Because I can smell my neighbor. I was thinking about it like this. Like, like just this last week, some changes. The stock market. It dropped drastically. Everybody came out in news media and said, there's a recession coming. Ah! And some people were like, see, yeah, I told you. And other people were like, no, 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 no. You know, whether it helped them or not. And then three days later, they said, never mind. <laughs> it dropped the most it had 
I believe it was mu- since March of 2022 or somewhere around there. And then three days later, it rose the most since September 2022. So it was like in a six-month span of a few years ago, the swing in the stock market. It did that in three days this last week. I mean, for a little bit, I was thinking, oh, my gosh. I'm going to have to pastor way past the time Pastor Tatham did. That 401 k is nothing now. And then a few days later, I was like, never mind, good. (laughs) I can retire earlier than he did. And all that change produces anxiety. And and then all of a sudden, you you start to get worn out. Your energy, you're like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Just do it. And so I'm going to explain some of the process really quick today about change. But over the next few weeks... I want to help you with some tools that'll, that'll give you the ability to be aware of what you're doing and how you're navigating change and some tools to help you process it well so that you can be fruitful in your next season. That when change comes, instead of being anxious or fearful, you understand better, you can recognize when people are trying to manipulate you in it, And then you can have a better positivity out of it. Don't let people manipulate you just because of change. Amen? Okay. So here's two things we're going to think about. And I I want to read a scripture real quick. I'm going to relate this to uh, uh, a change in the Bible. Number one. Here's change, okay? And this is in your notes. I'm I'm reading from the same notes as in your bulletin. So if you open up your bulletin there, you've got all my notes right here. Uh, Meditation. So here's what I want you to think about. Here's what I want you to think about. The transition process goes like this. Number one, something ends. Something ends. Next week, that's what we're going to talk about, how to deal with an ending. Because we have to recognize it and acknowledge it. Sometimes we're like, we don't want to acknowledge that ending. And we don't deal with it. And we just kind of bury it or stuff it down. And we never mourn it. Because an ending does produce some grief. Especially if you really enjoyed it. And it's okay to feel that grief and that sadness for a little bit. Instead of stuff it down or do something unhealthy and pretend like it's not happening. But we want to acknowledge endings in a healthy manner. And then, and then in, the, in the next step in transition becomes a messy middle. It's a bit chaotic right in the messy middle. Remember when Jesus died on the cross? There was a few days there where it was kind of a messy middle. They didn't know what to do. They were kind of like, oh, no, wait a minute. Some of them had completely forgot of everything he said, right? Peter didn't know what to do, so he went back to fishing. They were, you know, walking on the road, meeting strangers and whining to them. It turned out to be Jesus on the road to Emmaus, right? Some of them completely lost their help. Peter completely lost his mind as soon as the change happened that Jesus had promised. Like, Jesus? I don't know Jesus. Blankety blank blank. I don't know Jesus. That middle part gets messy. And we need a good way to navigate that. Because we, through that messy middle of, of change, we'll grab onto that new beginning. And that's the most exciting part about change, is that new beginning. A new opportunity, a new way to define yourself, a new way to live your life, a new way to define what you're doing, a new you. And it's powerful. So over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about the ending, the messy middle, and then the new beginning. And I want you to be here for that. It'll be lonely without you. (laughs) Amen. 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 Okay. So open your Bibles real quick. Open your Bibles to Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. 
This is a little story about people that did not navigate change very well. In fact, these people, they wanted the change really bad to happen. Have you ever wanted something to change and then it changed and you're like, oh, I didn't know it would be like that. I was expecting this. Maybe you didn't change right. Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5 and verse 6. And I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. Joshua chapter 5 and verse 6. You see, God had promised the Israelites the land of milk and honey. He was like, look, there is something really, really good. And they were slaves in Egypt, really, really bad. And God said, I can take you somewhere really good. And the Israelites said, okay, really bad, we don't like it. Really good, we like it. And they were going to do it. They were going to leave really bad and go to really good. And then they got into the messy middle. And they wanted to go back to the really bad. It got hard. And so they gave up. It didn't, it didn't turn out just like they thought it might. They wanted that change to be different. They wanted the change to be just like they wanted it. But they didn't want to change. No. They, listen, listen. They got out of Egypt, but Egypt was still in them. And so they still lived and acted like they were in Egypt. And what happens when you still live and act like you were in Egypt? You'll want to go back. You'll hear the church world say this. You can get the person out of Egypt, which is a type of sin, but you got to get the sin or the Egypt out of the person. If you don't, you'll go back. That's why transition is so important. Navigating the changes so that that you can change everything on the outside. Have you ever seen somebody move to get away from drugs? And they find a better dealer where they just went? Huh? Yeah? I know that. I had a really, really good friend. And they thought they would move and get away from drugs. And they moved and it got worse. (laughs) Found a better dealer. It was cheaper. (laughs) I'm telling you, we got to get this right. If you are struggling right now with some change in your life, if there is something in you that you don't want to stick around, if it is affecting your daily life, if, it's, if there is some change you tried to implement on the outside, yet the inside keeps dragging you back to Egypt, I want to help you. I want to help you navigate that change. Listen to this. This will make you feel better. Joshua chapter 5 verse 6. The Israelites had traveled in the wilderness for 40 years until all, the, all who were old enough to fight in battle when they had left Egypt had died. They disobeyed the Lord. The Lord vowed he would not let them enter the land he had sworn to give them. The land flowing with milk and honey. They had such, they had a promise. They had something great to go to. They, they stepped out of Egypt. Yet there was no internal change. Nothing transitioned. I don't know where you were this morning, what you thought you would encounter when you got here, what your assumptions may or may not have been. I'm not sure where you might want to go, but I want you to know this, 
that you can truly change and change inside and make the best out of anything that comes your way. You can let go of the things that even if they were great, you can let go of that and take hold of the new and the better for the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to read one more quick scripture. See, the Israelites, they had a seven-day journey. It was seven days. I know I, I messed up. I was telling this story a few weeks ago, and I was like, it's only seven miles. No, it's seven days. I was like adding it up in my head afterwards. I was like, oh, no, that wasn't right. They had a seven-day journey to walk from Egypt to Canaan. Seven days. Seven It took them 40 years, and most of them didn't make it, and they wanted to go back to Egypt. Said it was better back there, even though they were complaining, uh, they were under forced labor, and they wanted to go back. Okay, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. This is Moses. They're about to enter the land of Canaan. They're about to step in to the brand new. It's getting difficult that everybody who had left Egypt with them, that whole generation, the Bible says, had died off. That's how stuck in a rut we can get when we refuse to change. That we stop progressing. We don't move forward in our lives. Okay, Deuteronomy 31, right? Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy 31. This is Moses. And this is, these are the words I want you to know today. I want you to leave here with these words today. Because this is what Moses said. Moses was not allowed by God to go into the land promise, the land flowing with milk and honey. He jacked it all up. God said, you're not going. And Moses had learned the hard way of navigating change. And so Moses spoke these words over Israel. And he, he said this to them because he wants them to do better than he did. And he says this, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Be strong. This is what I want to tell you today. I want these words to ring in your ears all week. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Be strong and courageous. Look at your neighbor. Say, be strong and courageous. Look at your neighbor, other neighbor. The Lord will go in front of you. Huh? You ever, you ever seen like, like uh, bodyguards or something? I, I'm sorry if you don't like this or this offends you, but like when Trump walks in somewhere and all those bodyguards walk in front of him, like the UFC, I'm not talking about the Secret Service. The actual guys that, no, I'm just, <laughs> sorry. But you know, all the big dudes that look like they will mess you up and they're right in front of them they're like you even look at me son I'm gonna squish you those were the guys that go before him and God is saying I'm gonna be that in your life I'm gonna be the bodyguard in your life I'm gonna go before you and squish them if they ever try to get on you Nobody's going to touch you. You can have faith. You can have confidence that God will go before you and be your big guy. 
Come on. He's going he's gonna to say, tell him who your daddy is. Huh? You can walk confidently. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm confused. This is strange. I'm, I'm a little bit afraid. There are things I can't deal with if I accept this, but I know I need to. But God will go before you. He will personally be there in front of you. Come on. What are they going to do to you? Amen. Give the Lord praise. Amen. He will neither fail. I mean, would anybody even think God would fail? Doesn't even need to say it, but he still says it. I'm not going to fail you, and I'm not going to abandon you. You can be strong. You can be courageous. You can adapt to whatever comes your way and not only survive, you can thrive. Come on. Amen. All right. Adapting to change isn't easy, but it can yield powerful results in your life. So here's what I want us to do this week. Here's what I want us to do. Because change involves this process. And you have to think about, I mean, give yourself a moment. I don't like to use the word time. Give yourself time because ain't nobody got time. So let me say it like this. Give yourself a moment. A moment to think about it. What kind of change am I facing right now in my life? What what needs to end? What might that ending look like? God will be with me through that middle. And what's that new beginning I can take on? I'm telling you, if you do these things, I'll give these to you after every message. Just something you can do this week. I promise you. If you do these things, you'll yield powerful fruit in your life. You'll change. With, you will bear fruit in every season. Every season. Come on. Amen? Okay, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to think about current changes. And I want you to, in your bulletin, on a piece of paper, in your phone, however you do, if you text yourself things or, or write yourself notes or email How many of you email yourself things you want to remember? I put things in my calendar to remember. I might put something in my calendar. Pick your kids up at two today. (laughs) Because that has helped me more than once. (laughs) Don't tell anybody I said that. That'd be embarrassing. Forget my kids. But write it down. Write something down. Take a moment, think about it, and write down some change. And then say, okay, this is what might have to end. And some of you might have to grieve over that ending. And that's okay. Give yourself a little space. Some time to do it. And then be willing to enter into that new beginning. Amen? Amen. I'm going to pray. If you have anything you want to pray for, when I'm done, we're going to have prayer workers. They're going to be down here in front, and they would love to pray with you. The Bible says where two or more come into agreement, it is done. So come down and pray with a prayer worker. Remember, I'm going to be in the lobby. If you're new, please uh, uh, just come say hi. I would love to give you uh, an Inspire coffee mug. Make sure you get a golf ball from one of the pastors. Use it as a way to invite somebody to church next week. Amen. Make us use the balcony. Don't you want to get up there? I want to get up there. Be super fun. All right, let's pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, you're so good. There are some things we may not understand in life. 
It's not all roses. Some of it's really difficult, Father. But your word says that you go before us, that you'll personally be there with us. Lord, we need you. Lord, we want you. Father, I pray over everybody dealing with some changes that they may not have wanted. That you would give them the strength to grieve that ending and look forward to a new beginning. Father, I pray over those that had changes that they were glad to get out of, but now it's messy. So I pray that you help and guide them, navigate them, help that confusion. Father, I pray that your word, your spirit, will prompt us to look to you and to seek you and to hear from you. And Lord, for those of us starting something new, help us to be open, flexible, and willing. Lord, we give you all the glory and praise for these things. We thank you, Lord, for helping us navigate change. We pray for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Real quick before we go, I want to say this. Thank you. That's awesome. If you want to say it like this, you might be here and you've never experienced the change of being born again. This is the main reason we're here is that we've experienced being born again. We've experienced a change. And you may have been to church before. You may have heard these things before. But it wasn't an experience that showed up. Or maybe at one time You were super excited about it, but the change didn't last. And I want to pray with you just for a minute before we leave about that change, about a way to experience real, lasting change. And that's by accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. This is what I mean, is that we, we have a propensity to do something that's not positive or life-giving. Sometimes we, we make mistakes we didn't mean to make. Sometimes we didn't even know it was bad until someone else told us it was bad. But in all these things, the most important thing about this is that you can start a relationship with God that you know and experience him as your bodyguard, that he will go before you, that he'll help you navigate everything that comes into your life, that you'll have a friend that never leaves, the one that truly cares for you like no one else does, the one that loves you Because he wants you. Jesus. So I'm going to say let's bow our heads and close our eyes. The Bible says that if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. In other words, you believe that Jesus really did and really was punished for you. And you call him Savior. In other words, you accept that as your, as, as your own. You say, yeah, Jesus, I accept the fact that you were punished for me. And I want to live life with you. I want you to change me. I, wanna, I don't want anything to prevent me from talking to you and hearing you. We believe in our hearts. And we confess with our mouth 
that Jesus is Lord. So here it is. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask you to pray with me. Ask some of you that have prayed this maybe to support them that are praying and we'll all just pray it out loud. Say, dear God, I want change inside. I believe Jesus paid the price for sin. I believe Jesus rose from the dead and I call him Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, give me new life. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.